Is the T-Rex just a T-Rex, an animal that we're all familiar with? Or is it actually three different species that all of us have mistakenly been thinking was the same one? The animal that we know as Tyrannosaurus or Tyrannosaurus rex is the only species known to us so far in the genus Tyrannosaurus. But in a controversial new study that was published in the journal Evolutionary Biology, three paleontologists argue that the fossils that are currently classified as T-rex actually can be grouped into three different types based on their body structure and they further state that these three types are actually three separate species of Tyrannosaurus. The authors propose two new names for two new species. They say that these are Tyrannosaurus regina or Latin for Tyrant Lizard Queen and T. Imperator, Latin for Tyrant Lizard Emperor. Rex, of course, means king. But not all scientists agree with the conclusion of this paper. In this video, we'll look at what these paleontologists are proposing and why so many scientists are up in arms about reclassifying the beloved T-Rex. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. In this study, the authors analyzed the bones and dental remains of 37 different specimens of T-Rex. They compared different parts of the body between all of these fossils and they checked for two things. One was the length and the circumference of the femur, which in turn indicated the strength of the bone. The femur is the thigh bone. Then they also measured the diameter at the base of teeth in the gums to see if the specimens had one or two incisor teeth. These are variations in T-Rex fossils, which paleontologists are already aware of and have acknowledged. Different specimens exhibit different changes in these particular parameters. The three paleontologists who authored this paper discovered that there were twice as many specimens with more robust femurs than there were with slimmer thigh bones. They concluded that the variation is not sex-based because if it had been, they would have seen an equal split. They also then looked at the layers of sediments where these fossils were found. They compared the femurs of T-Rexes in one layer to other theropods or carnivorous dinosaurs in the same layer. They saw that in the lowermost layer, the femur robustness was not differing among different species of carnivorous dinosaurs or theropods. So they conclude that in this lower layer of sediment where they found six femurs and studied them, only one species of Tyrannosaurus or Tyrannosaurus existed. Then they checked the middle layer of sediment and the upper layers of sediment. With sediments, the higher we go, the more recent in time are the layers. They found that in the middle layer of sediment, there was only one femur that was thin. And in the upper layer, they found five thin femurs along with other robust femurs. So the authors of the paper conclude that initially there had been an ancestral T-Rex, a common ancestor with robust femurs. This is the one that they found in the lower layer of the sediment. They say that this species then evolved to have more slender femurs in later species. The authors say that the differences in femur robustness across layers of sediments may be considered distinct enough that the specimens could potentially be considered separate species. The authors say that Tyrannosaurus imperator relates to the specimens that are found in the lower and middle layers with more robust femurs and two incisor teeth. Then they say that there's T. regina that's in the upper and middle layers of the sediment characterized by slender femurs and a single incisor tooth. And then there's T. rex they say found in the upper and middle layers once again along with regina but with more robust femurs and only a single incisor. So the king and queen descended from the emperor, they say. The three paleontologists in this paper claim that the differences are subtle enough to look like variations among different individuals rather than be completely different species. And so all of the Tyrannosaurus fossils that we know have been mistakenly all classified as T-Rex without accounting for these subtle variations. But not everyone agrees with the conclusion of this paper. 
Since it's come out, most paleontologists seem to have disagreed with it. Most scientists think that the variation in femurs is brought about by how T-Rexes grow in their environment. As the dinosaurs matured and reached sexual maturity and adulthood, they started to grow differently. Their build might have changed depending on their sources of food, how much they hunted to get that food, and in general, the ecosystem they inhabited, the terrain, and many other such factors. Experts say that yes, there probably would have been multiple species of Tyrannosaurus. But this particular paper isn't rigorous enough to establish the differences between these three different species and actually legitimize them, say scientists. T-Rexes lived in what is today North America. They inhabited lands from Canada to US to Mexico. Scientists believe that at any point, maybe 20,000 individuals lived at the minimum. This was during the late Cretaceous period. The most complete specimen of T-Rex that we have is called Sue, named after the discoverer of the fossil. From Sue, we have learned a lot about T-Rex. This fossil is nearly 12 and a half meters long. The animal probably would have weighed anywhere from 8,500 to 14,000 kilos. Sue had a robust femur and is the holotype of T. imperator in the new paper. A holotype is a single specimen that is designated as the scientific example of something of a species. So here, Sue is the holotype for Tyrannosaurus imperator. There is another fossil which contains nearly half the bones of the animal and this is called Wankel rex. This is designated as the holotype for T. regina in the new paper. There are smaller fossils of individuals as well that paleontologists have discovered and have also discovered ones that have lived to be very old when they died. There are famous named specimens of T-Rex that are on display and some of the popular ones include Trix, Jane, Bucky, Samson, Baby Bob, Scotty, Black Beauty, Victoria and many more. Paleontologists have also discovered dinosaur fossils that look like T-Rex but turned out not to be. There was a fossil that was discovered in Asia in Mongolia in the 1950s and this was initially called Tyrannosaurus batar. However, after much analysis, by the mid-60s, the species was renamed to Tarbosaurus batar, a whole new genus, but descended from and related to the T-Rex. There was another Chinese specimen discovered in 2001, but that then became classified as the Shu Cheng Tyrannus magnus. So, yeah, T-Rex did evolve from something and it did evolve into something and it is very likely that there were multiple species of the same genus existing together in the past. But, despite the publication of this paper, the consensus now still seems to be that we don't have enough data to distinguish between different species of T-Rexes if they exist and if we've already discovered those fossils. So, for now, whether we like it or not, there is only one tyrant lizard king.